disbelief, fear, anxiety, guilt, sadness, grief, depression, and anger. These are some of the common feelings the American Cancer Society says you may experience after you are diagnosed with cancer. The journey following a diagnosis may be a long struggle, but what about the rush of emotions upon initially learning the news? Right now, as Winging at Buffalo Style goes pink, we are learning about the emotional effects of dealing with the news of a cancer diagnosis. We're joined right now on the couch by mental health counselor Lynn Shine. You're always here with our expert advice when we discuss things like this. Um, we just looked at all of those pictures on the screen. That's a, those are terrible feelings. Yes. That they tell you to be prepared for. Well, those feelings are the feelings that everyone experiences in any sort of grief reaction. So initially, you're shocked. Um, you know, and you're in denial that this maybe it's not a true diagnosis, and you start bargaining with whether it be a higher power or you're bargaining with the doctors, and you're, you know, you go through period by period depression and guilt and anger until you get to resolution. And it's waves of an ocean, it's not a clear little line. You go from one stage to the other to the other. And when you're ready to start telling people, that can be very hard to prepare for what their reactions are going to be. Uh, what is your advice for, for people who are going through this? I think is you can tell anybody as little or as much as you want to tell them. Um, understand your audience. So there's some people, if you know that they like to chat or they'll give too much information, you may want to um, preface your statements with, Listen, I know that a whole lot of people have this, but I'd rather you not tell me the stories. Or um, I have breast cancer, but I'm, you know, I, I feel confident that we'll be able to be okay. Um, so all of those things. So if you preface your statements, people's reactions will follow, like your, you know, how you're um, discussing it. And a lot of people have trouble um, dealing with the feeling that people feel sympathy for them or that they feel mm -hmm. bad. That can be hard for people to deal with. How do you suggest people handle that? Because that's what people will feel for you if you are diagnosed. That's, that's exactly right. And, you know, people feel like they need to say something. And sometimes what they say, they feel like they need to give advice or they need to tell about their next door neighbor who has cancer or they feel. And the reality is you shouldn't be saying any of those things. Um, you need to say, gosh, I don't know what that feels like. I'm not in your shoes, but I'm sorry. Or, um, you know, I'm thinking about you or something like that versus giving giving too much information to them. So what if you hear through the grapevine that someone, maybe not someone you're incredibly close to, but that is an acquaintance and you feel the need to reach out um, just having heard about the, their news, what is an appropriate way to handle that? Well, the first thing, and, and I like what you started with, you always reach out. Some people feel like um, they don't want to reach out because they don't know what to say. And that's probably the worst thing you can do because it's a frightening, scary time and they certainly don't want to lose their friends at that time. So reaching out and just saying, like I said, listen, I heard and know that I'm thinking about you. Or um, the other thing that people do, which I really think is fantastic, is, is having a chain of people that either bring over a meal if someone's going through chemotherapy or radiation and they're not going to have the energy to feed their families. And there's a lot of anxiety that goes along with that so even just organizing something to take care of that family is a good a good thing to do so that's kind of how you deal with the initial reaction but um, as we talk about coping along the way and continued support so maybe you'd reach out initially but then as you go through your treatments and things how often should you be checking in do you think you know, again, it really depends person by person. Some people don't want to have social connections. Um, they, they're they just trying to get through their day. But I think that reaching out, if you're on the other end of that, it can't hurt to send a little card or to just leave a message on the machine and preface it with, you don't need to call me back, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking about you today. Or offering to sit with them if they're going for chemo. Um, that can be lonely or frightening and they want companionship. The other thing is humor is a fantastic thing to get anyone through so you don't have to be solemn you know while you're going through it humor is is fantastic Maybe not to be afraid of that or something yeah. that will make yeah. them smile true exactly okay. all right great thank you so much for joining us on the thank couch this morning for winging it goes pink week uh, always great advice from our mental health counselor lynn rifkin chine we appreciate thank you very it much.